Gentlemen, we have just received the green light for the landing operation on Baltesque Peninsula. The Russian Baltic fleet is currently resupplying in the harbor of Kaliningrad and will soon be ready to take the sea. Taking control of this peninsula would trap them in the lagoon, rendering them basically non-operational in the region. Our troops are ready to storm the beach, but according to our latest satellite data, a mobile coastal artillery battery is defending the harbor. These guns must be silenced before we can launch the main assault, or this will turn into Omaha Beach 2.0. The guns have been spotted here. This is a battery of Barrick 152mm howitzers. They can detect and engage fast-moving targets above the water. That includes ships and helicopters. Local intel reports that a battery of surface-to-air missiles is present on the south bank of the lagoon, but the precise position of each launcher is unknown as they're relocated every day. That makes a missile or airstrike way too hazardous. Our best option is to send in a light force to eliminate the anti-air and artillery batteries by surprise and open the way for the main landing. They don't expect that kind of attack, so the ground forces in the area are limited. Commander, you will be in charge of the first wave while I organize the main landing. Prepare your troops, but remember, it's a one-time opportunity, so it's make or break. Make it happen, Commander. Good luck. My ships cannot approach as long as the coastal battery located in this port is operational. The anti-air missiles are located on the other side of the canal. A Russian missile battery generally consists of six vehicles. Two of them have been located on the beach, but the others must be hiding in the nearby city. The reconnaissance group has made contact with the enemy and reports the presence of a tank company defending the area. I hope you brought some dedicated anti-tank units with you. If not, use smoke and buildings to your advantage. Smoke and Arrow's current demo really throws you into a dark sink or swim situation. The first phase of the demo mission puts a good degree of boiling tension against the seemingly dystopian landscape of a time past. The environment feels lived in, real, and deserted. The families have moved on and the drums of battle are beginning to take beat. It's time to set in for the most brutal form of rock, paper, scissors you have ever experienced. Every move has a consequence. Every moment of preparation and thought brings clarity, success, or failure. Broken Arrow feels like a continual test of wit and knowledge, tactic and strategy, reflex and response. You're in for a test of endurance. down in the thick of combat. Broken Arrow's current visual state pours into the reality of the experience. Every piece of terrain, every hard corner, and every open field all play a critical role in strategy and tactic on a continually tense pace. My 
My attention was pulled from the small force of marines I had set up to do a quick sweep. I held them in position to lay an ambush for the patrolling armor elements the Op 4 had in this district. However, the enemy moved a probing attack on my force recon squads I had on observation detail. At this point in the early engagement I felt like I needed to stop playing so small. It was time to call in some forces that I could stage to take on the district of apartment complexes and townhomes that lay to the north side of the current AO. I wanted to emphasize a leapfrog type move and clear strategy for the seemingly gauntlet like arrangement of buildings and parks between my small force and the remaining objectives. few mobile armored mortars, I wanted to employ the observation skills of Foracom on the western side of their engagement zone. Op 4 had mobilized an armor element to watch the long boulevard to make use of the sight lines into my defensive line that I was forming. If I was going to move on that side of the map, we would need to sneak up on that armor and lay an ambush. This is the nature of Broken Arrow. As soon as you feel that you have made a relatively sensible move, 
opposing force teaches you that no action is without consequence on this battlefield, making use of tight corners through the maze-like urban structures, the armor from before, and mobilize an attack on the APC. roaming the streets of the complexes appeared to be making a blitz for my push on the western side of the AO. I was concerned that my entire force was about to be spotted, but I quickly found that an overzealous move can also be quick checked by a hard line of devil dogs with Enemy or without my micromanagement. I'm not going to let the enemy AV pick off any more of my units. It was time to form a firing line for a quick succession of fire to finish the vehicle off once and for all. The attack that was aimed to remove an enemy AV from the field had blown into a larger scale firefight. It was not a pretty sight, and with casualties mounting, it was time to pull some of the elements out of this district. If I was going to keep this line intact, it was going to take a bit more finesse, and not such heavy handed tactics.
recon. Engaged in combat. Armored transport. Standing by. U.S. Marines, ready for duty. Marines taking fire. Patrolling enemy helos were beginning to impose their presence further and further toward my end of the battlefield, seemingly searching for a gap in my line. I needed to put the pressure in check with my own anti-air stinger squad. I wanted to ensure that my mortar teams were not sacked while I worked to push further into the residential district I had been trying to seize. The launcher is gone. Good. I once again assumed a defensive posture, laying consistent barrages towards the last known enemy locations. The push on the western beach that I had tried to make blew up in my face. At this point I felt like I was operating on too little real-time battlefield intel. I needed to set up a forward observation team on each side of the island. Their mission would be to probe for a weak point in their line that I could move a smaller, more specialized force through. Battlefield logistics in Broken Arrow add another tactical layer to the dynamic nature of modern battle. Making use of strategic staging areas, you can use defensive areas like this one to set up a rally and fallback point for forward operations. Early in battle, time is your worst enemy, so the less that you waste waiting for deployment of key forces, the more tactically you can respond to the enemy. 
Missile launcher destroyed. Impossible. The force recon squad I'd set up to push north on the eastern side of the battlefield was busted. If I was going to make this move, like I said, my attention was going to have to be managed better. Op 4 had continually run pressure inducing IFVs on that side of the map during the entirety of the engagement this far. A couple of LAVs and forecon squads would be able to stealthily move forward, but only if I could pay closer attention. destroyed. The entire tank platoon has been destroyed. Good job. survivor of the eastern forecon element that survived the blitz on that side of the AO had earned a trip back to base. It was time to bring up another that team or two and gone. push north through Good. the battlefield on the east to prevent any more attacks making it through my western lines. My entire experience through this first phase of the beta mission in Broken Arrow had these moments. It was like the calm before the storm. Moments like these had me on edge. Questions of being prepared for another assault or hidden enemies loomed heavily with every push. 
but I also found myself craving engagement just to see how I could respond tactically with what I had available at my call. Welcome to the Missile Age, choppers! Digger team here! Marines standing by! Most of the western flank cleared and secure, it was time to get a staging and rally position put in place. With the line pressed far enough north on the western bank, I could push a rally point into a tight group of multi-story residential buildings. It wouldn't come without its own risks, however. By not having an eye on the eastern side of the battlefield, I opened myself to another blitz from an enemy IFV. This was a mission destined for the special forces that I could field during this engagement. The plan here with the force recon and lav element was to move stealthily up the eastern side of the battlefield through the small strip of trees and obscuring single-story residential buildings and landscape. I wanted to get as much of a view of the opposing side of the district of the buildings I was moving to secure on the western front. The enemy has been good about responding with counterattacks and maintaining defensive positions, so the better I could anticipate attacks, the sooner I could respond.
time order elements had been key during the entire engagement this far. Their importance would be further exemplified during this phase of the battle when most of the elements I had fielded were infantry. This continual scout and report tactic had worked for me before in the past to a great effect, so I was eager to field a similar tactic during this phase of the battle. to use this force recon element to spot the backside of the district my western forces were preparing to clear was working well. Using the scouting team, I was able to spot some of the enemy's defensive positions they had taken on the side of the apartment complexes to the west. Good copy! Fire coordinates received! Force recon in combat! Roger, Charlie Mike. We're not afraid of the distance. A platoon of naval infantry has been spotted crossing the canal. Prepare for a counteroffensive. This building and side cleared, it was time to get an elevated view of the surrounding areas. I decided to move my force recon squad into a multi-story building to get a quick peek of the park and opposing buildings. Aim was to use the intel to call in a heavy barrage of mortar strikes on the defensive positions of the enemy. to the metal. Good 
Good copy. Next waypoint received. Personal carrier ready! It was time to start tightening the noose on the enemies that were still holed up in this district. After staging the bulk of my offensive force in the small rally area I had secured earlier, I was able to mobilize the forces to form a line south of our current Eastern and Western forces that pushed through the area. Force recon here. Roger. Time for a walk. What's a Marine? Always a Marine! The constant thump of the mortar teams and the isolated firefights that would erupt here and there after this intense standoff was a really intense experience. I had made the attack, but the losses were great. If I had prepared my western troops better, I may have not lost so many by bolstering their numbers with a few more squads of Americans. Although much of my armor had been either destroyed or was in poor state, it was still a relief knowing that I could move my existing forces forward to form a new line and rally point in preparation for the next push.
Tigger team standing by. All hands! Roger! Fire coordinates received! Breaker 1-9, who needs supplies? Having the strategic use of indirect fire from the mortar teams was amazing. Couple that with using smoke to shield movement or evacuation, and the tacticality of the element becomes so much more valuable. But the same can be said about every unit in Broken Arrow at this point within this demo. None feel like a redundancy of the more simple versions of units we may have become used to. Used effectively and tactically, even the most simple unit can be used to carry out amazing feats on the battlefield. AT specialists at your disposal. Spotting a defensive position the enemy had taken at a key point of the northern part of the battlefield, I decided that I was going to conduct a raid of the building under cover of smoke. The hope was to get my raiders into the building, clear it, and retreat back to a safe and secure position to launch further attacks. The element was to be covered by one lav and two squads of marines if things took a bad turn.
Send traffic. Raiders, hurrah! Raiders, always forward. This appeared to be the final front that I would face before moving to take out the missile trucks to the west. With the defensive enemy positions dotting the more open spaces, it was going to be a bit of a brawl to eliminate their line. This final area needed to be completely secure to stage the third phase of this battle's initial air and amphibious assault across the channel to the north. Move and clear was back at the top of the list, however, security needed to remain tight.
The launcher is gone. Good. Move, move, move. Copy. We take that building. I want a base of fire in that building. Roger. Time for a walk. Marines in combat. Requesting order. Mark on here. Missile launcher taken out. Already there. That was the last missile launcher. Air assets are now available. Solid you can down. call in helicopters from the reinforcement panel. Now cross the canal, destroy the guns, and take control of that fort. Once it's done, establish a defensive perimeter. Enemy paratroopers are mobilizing as we speak. Get your asses in that building! When I had reached the shore, I was met by the remnants of their amphibious assault teams. These squads must have been left behind to secure the beachhead. Moving Nowhere left to go, they fled into the water, where they did not surrender, and where I gave no quarter. Good it's time now next to make the final received. push for our objective here, and begin right staging up. operations for the next phase of the attack. US Marine, Roger, Charlie Mike. Fire at will! Move your asses, maggots!
With all of the enemy forces and positions eliminated on this side of the channel, it was time to get my troops resupplied and staged so that I could get a good idea of how I could strategically deploy the units that I had already fielded. Amphibious assaults in Broken Arrow feel legitimate. The game helps you achieve a particular sense of progression that I have not experienced in an RTS before. The type of progression that gives you the idea that you are making a difference. The lines are being pushed. At this point of the demo, you're slowly introduced into the array of units at your disposal. Now that the anti-air batteries have been silenced, we now have access to the Osprey, King Stallion, and the Cobra Assault Choppers. These three Hilo units vastly increase your ability to not only adapt new strategies, but add yet another tactical layer for you to experiment with. fashion, the Hilo units all have their respective capabilities and capacities for cargo and personnel. When making moves like this, the King Stallion is our heavy lift craft, offering the ability to even transport LAVs to the battlefield to be deployed wherever we can get a chopper. This integration of tactical mobility offers a lot of strategic element to Broken Arrow, making the experience feel highly tactical and strategic at all points. Spray can fill a similar role, they lack the ability to carry our light armor into the AO. But for what the Osprey lacks in cargo capacities, it makes up for with agility. In the right scenarios, it can quickly move into densely structured areas like a city center to not only drop troops, but frontline supplies as well.
During my entire experience with Broken Arrow's demo mission, I was continually impressed by the level of detail and care that went into the authentic recreation of these amazing engineering marvels like the King Stallion here. Seeing this big beautiful helicopter swoop into the battlefield ready to do whatever mission I had lined up for it brought about a sense of immersion within the game that I thoroughly enjoyed. That continually revisits my mind while engaging with Broken Arrow is the sense of scale that is built into every level of the game. From moving in closely to get a good line of sight perspective of your tanks, to soaring overhead like a commander with a full aerial view of the operation, you are always able to tailor your view of the game to best suit the tactical needs of the situation. But this is just the core of the future. Further out, you begin to notice just how much care has gone into the strategic side of PC gaming that may even bring up similarities to tabletop strategy games such as Warhammer 40k. Roger, we're Oscar Mike. Roger, we're on the move. Tilt rotor aircraft here. My goal here was to first get everyone supplied, rearmed, and back into top shape, and then stage a larger amphibious APC push across the channel under cover of smoke. Before the assault was to take place, I needed to get a few recon elements in place so that I was not moving blindly against the entrenched forces on the opposing side. In Broken Arrow, even the most simple and seemingly basic units can be deadly against the unsuspecting. The element of surprise that is created through real-time line of sight in the game creates a very different engagement protocol that compels the player to micromanage the tip of their spear to the finest detail and to the greatest effect.
After a brief but intense firefight between my landing party and the opposing defensive units in these two commercial buildings, it was time to get a makeshift FARP in place. If you're not familiar with the term FARP, it stands for Forward Arming and Refueling Point. Although fuel is not a part of the land-based vehicles in Broken Arrow, it is with aircrafts like planes. This area would be used to further stage my assault of the mixed residential and commercial district that lie to the north of the wooded areas of the southernmost point on this side of the channel. It was now time for me to begin moving the bulk of my forces waiting on the other side of the channel to be dropped into another commercial port area on the east side of the hill. With the surrounding area secure, I could potentially make the hill into an FOB or rally point of sorts. It was time to get a higher level of situational awareness on the southern part of the hill. 
I wanted to get some eyes out into the tree lines to help me make my next move. It was clear that there were already defensive positions being held by forces within the residential districts, but I was still relatively blind to what was on the hill waiting for me, and more importantly, what may be waiting for me in the edges of the tree lines that dominated this area. Although the single player experience may offer a slower pace, it feels right for this type of game. When the plethora of units that you can field, even here at a basic level, begin to unfold on your awareness, your mind is instantly filled with strategic maneuvers that can work in this type of situation. That's part of the beauty of Broken Arrow. Even though you're not able to use every single unit that is available in the multiplayer part of the playtest, the basic units that you do have access to have many options to be tactically deployed on the battlefield. It strongly encourages the player to experiment and try new things almost continually throughout the experience and throughout the battle. teams now on this side of the channel i wanted to start securing the port to the east side of the hill i felt that this area would act as a good area to move and stage troops from once the objective was concluded on the hill this small force was armed for bear i wanted a small maneuverable force but not one that could be put in check by any units the op 4 could throw my way After discovering that some of the buildings over here were occupied by defensive forces, I decided that the larger mixed district area to the north side of the hill was more pressing at this time. With units staged for an assault, I wanted to again engage in a little battlefield stealth and move my troops up to the edge of the area under the cover of smoke. Once I was able to take up a defensive position here, 
I can make a better push with the bulk of my forces to the northwest and potentially surround the hill without worry of any entrenched forces that could launch counterattack. first push successfully pulled off and supplies safely dropped, it was clear that the fight to the north side of the hill was not over yet. Recon elements had spotted a mobile AA unit lying in wait behind a shipping terminal in an obscured location. If I was going to get a stronger foothold in this area and introduce attack choppers to a greater effect here, it was important for me to secure the area of any existing AA. 
This would help me gain air superiority in this area and also help me create a better defensive position for all of my units. I've touched on this before during the first part of the series, however, I'd like to state it again. Supplies and logistics that exist as they are right now in Broken Arrow create an added layer of strategy and tacticality to this RTS. After dropping a supply vehicle onto the beach, I loaded it up and moved towards the front where I would rearm and reinforce the units of my northern assault. the northern side of the hill mostly secure it was time to move on and secure the eastern port side of the hill and then finally onto the primary objective removing the coastal artillery batteries and capturing the position tune in to episode 4 
where the final objective of our initial engagement is fought with every tooth and nail I can bring to bear on my enemy. Digital battlefields where strategy meets the front line, we've embarked on a journey through the eyes of a commander. Welcome back to the final chapter of our exploration into Broken Arrow's single player demo, a modern military marvel that has both challenged and captivated us. Today, we conclude our series with a reflective look at our journey, the strategies that defined our victories, and the lessons learned amidst the virtual warfare. The stage has been set and the pieces are in play. It is time for us to finally take the hill. But before we do, we must fully secure a strong foothold on this side of the channel in order to facilitate logistic needs that will come into play as we push the line forward and ultimately over the hill. I felt like my position on this side of the engagement zone near the hill had been mostly secured by this point. It was time for me to get my mortar teams restocked and ready for the next push. Facilitating the needs of your units on the battlefield creates a lot of investment and engagement with every single unit I have fielded. Ensuring that squads are full, damage is repaired, and ammunition is topped off brings attention to the real resources of the game. When you find units out of ammunition to lay a wall of smoke, or when it's time to pull the trigger on that ambush you have been coordinating, if you don't have ammo, it won't happen. Those small considerations within the mechanics of Broken Arrow are what makes the experience really shine for me, and as a player who has only engaged with the single player aspects of the title, I can't describe how awesome it feels to figure out how to resupply my units to the fullest effect during combat. Although there are lulls between battles like you can see here, do not fret. In early stages of this same engagement in parts 1, 2, and 3, the enemy makes it clear that retaliation is part of the battle. Getting caught with your troops unsupplied or your units not in a good position to defend an area can be the difference between truly pushing a line or creating a larger no man's land within the engagement zone. If there is no supporting defensive line or logistics in place after an event where your front line succumbs to a counter assault, you will quickly find that the enemy has no issue with planting a few pieces of armor or infantry plates to make you work that much harder to take back the ground lost. This part of the surrounding area felt like a prime spot to stage a rally point, but before I was to move any more units into this position, I needed to finally secure the last finger of warehouses and shipping terminals at the end of the pier. With units in position and ready to act, I began to stage the assault. Marines at your command, sir! 
Raiders here. Set traffic. Units resupplied and ready for action, it was time to finish the job and get this part of the port secured. With no indirect fire available in this area, it was going to be the final bloody fight in this port for the time being. Although that battle was over, our lab had taken a solid hit. Fortunately, we had supplies in place to make the repairs. However, this small fight brings focus to the fact that I had made earlier in other parts of this series. Units are all important. When used effectively, even the most basic of units can bring about meaningful and even dramatic changes on the battlefield. Paired with the logistical concerns that I had mentioned earlier, the experience of commanding your forces within Broken Arrow feels true to form in many aspects that appeal to the reality of combat as it can be portrayed within a modern military RTS. With the southern part of the port secured, it was time to move my mortar teams into a better position that could be used to support the hill as things move forward. Last area to secure lays directly to the north of my new rally position in the port. There are groups of high-rise residential type structures that will make the hill indefensible. Before the hill is captured, we need to take those buildings and use them as a front line. Unfortunately, during our push in the Western Residential District and Commercial Districts, we lost a few squads. The agility and speed of the Osprey came to the rescue for us multiple times during our missions. With the insertion point for ground-based troops still being all the way back on the other side of the channel, moving units in via air from the carrier group off the coast, we were able to get our troops and supplies back up to speed quickly. Copy. Relocating.
mark on here. Linking with extraction team. Finger on the trigger. Someone after a ride? By this point, I felt fine taking my eyes off the side of the hill. I decided to pull out the force recon element I had positioned there, paired them up with a squad of marine raiders. Their mission would be to begin systematically taking and clearing the north side of the port, just at the base of the residential high-rise buildings that dominate this part of the battlefield. With the first little push towards the high rises, I could see that there were still some holdout enemy positions in the residential buildings down the street. During my time while playing this demo, I couldn't help but become more and more excited by the prospect of enjoying the full campaign of this incredible RTS. 
I made mention of it before, but the PvP aspect of the game is something I may never get into. The idea of fighting bots during a campaign sounds incredible, and I'm sure that there will be plenty for us to enjoy within that experience alone. Top that with all the PvP oriented combat, and this game is set to be in a good spot with many gamers in my opinion. With the northern portion of the port secured, it was time to get the front line pushed forward a bit further. I could feel the news I had been creating on this side of the port begin to tighten, finally around the two focal points in this area. The house to house fighting in the west and the more open nature of the port added different tactical elements to each approach. Your relationship with the environment on the battlefield in Broken Arrow feels immersive. Peeking corners with armor, using obstructing buildings or terrain features, or using smoke screens to conceal movement are all part of the battlefield stealth that you can implement within the game. Using the Marine Raiders to secure these high-rise buildings was like a walk in the park. This Special Forces team has many utilities on the battlefield, one of which that I never used, the laser designation. You can mark a target with the squad for jets or bombers laser-guided weaponry, as well as laser-guided artillery strikes. These functions were used to a great effect by players during the PvP playtest. If there is one streamer and content creator out there that I would like to give props to for their exposure of this game, it would be Devil Dog Gamer. I will provide a link in my description box below for one of his PvP streams. The prospect of other specialized units and discovering how to use them to their full effect is probably one of the most exciting aspects to Broken Arrow for me. Four 
Force Recon ready. Forcon, standing by. Marines, at your orders, sir! Affirmative. Entering building. Someone ask for a ride? Artillery destroyed. Now take that board and establish a defensive perimeter. By this point it was time for me to bring in some close air support. With the final battery ahead. destroyed, it would just be a matter of clearing out the remaining units in this area and preparing a line before ultimately taking the hill and securing this position for the coastal landing that will take place during the second phase of this battle. Everything we had worked towards was finally coming to a point, and the tension was building. Although it may not be clear from this point what kind of fighting is about to ensue, you will want to stay tuned because it is about to get pretty bloody. In fact, this experience alone was what convinced me that I had nothing to worry about when it came to the presentation of the campaign within Broken Arrow.
transport. Ready. Personal carrier, here. Someone called for a cab? Roger. The high-rises were secure. The battle that ensued to take these giants was nothing short of intense and immersive. Hearing the sound of muffled gunfire as my troops raided an occupied building pulled me into the moment. That brings me to another point that I would like to make. Sound design is so important in video games. When it comes to music or actual sound effects, the action can really be felt. Although I do use my own selection of music within these videos, I want to say that the music present in Broken Arrow does a very good job of carrying the experience. Top that with top-notch sound effects for the units and communications, and you have a completely immersive snapshot into that particular moment. In fact, Broken Arrow does a very good job of creating that necessity within the player at all times. Although there are only a few real objectives within the demo, each strategic push or tactical maneuver feels like its own self-appointed mission. There's no greater feeling than seeing a plan go off well when all points are considered during its formulation. I got my ears on, go ahead. Personal carrier ready. Already there. With the hilltop as our final objective, we move to secure the point. Right now, I want to pull back and let everyone take in this experience. The battle that is about to take place marks the start of yet another intense point within the mission as we begin to make the transition from phase one to phase two. After the combat on the ground is complete, it will be time to move the theater to another point within the battlefield. Strap in because it blows my mind how well all aspects of this demo all begin to pull together. These buildings are overlooking the fort. Make your position indefensible if enemy troops take them. Hold this position as long as you can. Marines at your command, sir.
This is it. The enemy paratroopers are here.
It's heading your way, Bullseye 1109. -er. Engage and destroy. I'll copy. Over. 1 1 copy. Pegs out. Yellow Jacket copies. This is not where the battle ends. This is the start of phase two of this operation. I hope you enjoyed the culminating battle of this first phase of this engagement. This is all recorded live during one of my Twitch streams. I highly enjoyed my time within the demo of Broken Arrow. And if you missed it, I hope that this video can help you to see just how incredible this game is to play. Stay tuned. I have more footage of my time within the demo. Initial contact is just the start, but second wave will show you different aggressive tactics and take you all the way through the demo mission in its entirety. As always, I appreciate you and thank you for watching. There you have it. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed the video or the demo mission for Broken Arrow, please give my video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe for more content. This has been Dr. Wiki, and until next time, take care.